Hello, my name is Thomas Beale. I'm the CTO of Ocean Informatics and one of the architects of OpenAir. This is part three of the ADL 1.5 course. We're going to talk about the documentation part of archetypes. So included in that is the issues of language and translation, authors and information about contributors, documentary uh, items like purpose, use, etc the life cycle state and versioning and some other elements referenced as a copyright and the extensibility of the documentary features. So just to go back to a context of the overall archetype, you might remember this view of the, uh, the outer structure of an archetype showing the top level keywords. So what we're concerned with right here are two sections, the language section and the description section. And just to remind you, here's an example. You can see the language section says, uh, gives the original language as being uh, English and in the description section we have a number of items, original author, details, uh, with an English language section inside that, so a linguistic uh, specific section containing purpose use keywords and so on. Then you'll see life cycle state down the bottom, uh, a list of contribu other contributors and also other details. If we look at this in the ADL workbench you'll see the same information but uh, laid out in a, a slightly friendlier visual form. This example shows the blood pressure archetype and a reasonable amount of documentation for the purpose, use, misuse and keywords fields. One question that's come up over recent years uh, during which a lot of archetypes have been built and better quality documentation has been created is that perhaps formatting needs to be added to the archetype object model to enable uh, slightly more sophisticated uh, formatting of uh, larger blocks of documentation such as the use and misuse sections you see there. Here's an example, uh, just a test archetype that uses the original resources field and that field is structured as a set of tagged strings. In this case uh, two tags, guideline and midline both are used to uh, refer to web locations. Another thing that may happen in the future, uh, perhaps in the next revision of Open Air uh, and or 2012 revision of 13606, is that the tags themselves would be coded rather than being free text as they currently are. This shows the UML model. Uh, it's not part of the AOM, it's actually from the common information model of Open Air and the authored, in, authored resource class is inherited into the archetype class and it carries uh, the relevant pieces that enable the documentary structures that you've just seen to be expressed in archetypes. So for example we have the original language which is a code phrase. We have information about each translation if there are translations in the archetype so uh, which language the author, accreditation information and other details. We have language independent information about the archetype. So this is about the author of the archetype, the original author, uh, contributors to the archetype during its design phase, what's the current life cycle state and uh, resource package reference. The next uh, class resource description item contains language dependent information. The previous class there in the middle uh, is language independent because if you consider the items that are there, author and contributors and so on, these are names of, of people, life cycle state. These are things that don't change, they're uh, independent of language. So the last group are dependent on language. So uh, we're talking about the purpose, keywords, use and so on. So when an archetype translation is made, 
all of these descriptive items are translated into uh, the new language. You can see that in all of these classes there's an, an other details property which uh, is defined as a hash of strings and this provides extensibility at all of the levels of documentation of the archetype. It could be argued that these need to be a bit stronger to enable, for example, coded keywords. Currently they're just strings as you can see there and that may well happen in the next revision of Open Air and 13606. We also have life cycle state and that's certainly likely to be coded in future versions of these models. Before we go there, let's just have a quick look at what the extensibility uh, enables for us. You can see in this example uh, this archetype has a, an other detail section at the bottom and it includes two items. One is an MD5 checksum and the other one is a references tag. There's currently nothing in there but there obviously is the intention to put references in there. Another example is for the models being created for the Clinical Information Modeling Initiative, SIMI. Some of those archetypes are actually designed as experimental so-called reference archetypes. So that the tool can detect this, the other details uh, part has been used to include a tag model level with a value reference and that enables the tool to detect this is supposed to be a reference archetype and it displays the archetype on the left hand side in the same way that it would display a class. And finally uh, an example that's used quite heavily in the archetype workbench is to put regression information in the archetypes so that a test archetype here that's designed to uh, generate this particular error in the compiler when the archetype is uh, compiled under the test tool, the comparison can be made and the usual uh, typical regression reporting can be made. So the tag in this case is regression and there are numerous archetypes in uh, the ADL test archetype repository that use this particular tag. So we'll go back to lifecycle state. You can see there a state machine for uh, the authoring lifecycle of an archetype going from in some cases pre-draft or draft uh, as the initial state to a team review to being published and that's the main part of the lifecycle. However from team review there may be a suspension of review for some reason. Also for many of those early states uh, the archetype might be rejected. If the archetype is published it may be reassessed over time. Uh, an archetype that lasts for a long time it probably will be reassessed because everything changes in, in medicine. Eventually an archetype could become obsolete. Now this is a, a domain view of things. In other words, uh, domain experts would see this life cycle as corresponding to the evolution of the archetype over its uh, various phases of design and review and if it's published that implies some level of uh, usable quality. Now versions and revisions are related but they're not exactly the same thing. They're essentially a technical concept and they matter because of change management in deployed templates and archetypes. What version of archetypes are being used by this template for example, that's an important question. Software cares about that because if the archetype versions change then it may change uh, the data points in the template and that may have some knock-on effects in software. So there are some basic rules. In uh, ADL we have a concept of a version and also something called a revision. So the basic ru uh, rule is that no change to an archetype may invalidate data created with the form prior to the change. Now sometimes of course breaking changes do have to be made and in 
archetype land, we call that a new version. Now that's a somewhat specific use of the word version. In ADL, a version means a new ID. Now you'll remember that on every archetype identifier that you've seen, at the end you see .v1 or .v2. That's the version number. So if you change the version, you go from 1 to 2, you actually change, you end up with a new identifier. If the change you're making is a non-breaking change, we call that a new revision. Or it might even be, if it's an internal uh, to a, a publishing environment, uh, a new build. So we have what are colloquially called version, revision and build. And an example is 1.4.0. This is formalizable and tools such as the openair ckm at openair.org slash knowledge will actively check changes in a, in a new, let's call it a version, of an archetype and it will decide whether it can be just a new revision or whether it actually has to be a version. Versions and revisions uh, are, are, have a strong design and they will map to semver.org which is a nice standardized versioning concept and essentially it documents uh, good practice that goes on in the software world and we can think in technical terms archetypes are sort of like software artifacts in the sense of being uh, a technical formalism each artifact has an identity and there are typical relationships between artifacts the same as we have in the software world so a typical kind of version is a three-part version as, as you've just seen with a possible extension and if you go to the semver.org site you can see the full explanation. We'll just have a look at some of the key items in uh, this uh, specification for versions. Rule number five, major version zero is for initial development. Now this tells us that anything may change at any time. The public API should not be considered stable. Now they talk in terms of public APIs because they're talking about software. With archetypes the public API equivalent is something like the set of paths for the archetype because that's what can be trusted uh, in terms of creating data and la then later querying for it. Rule number four once a versioning package has been released, the contents of that version must not be modified. So a version that's been released is essentially an immutable artifact. If you do anything to it, it's now a new version. A pre-release version may be denoted by appending a dash and a series of dots separated, separated identifiers immediately following the patch version. The patch version is what they call the uh, third digit in the three-part version identifier. Now the important part here is that uh, we want to be able to use in archetype uh, land the lifecycle names uh, potentially as these pre-release identifiers. So if we go back to the archetype lifecycle words like in review and draft and so on. Now if you're going to do that you have to know what the order of precedence of versions is and you'll see some examples highlighted there 1.0.0.alpha this is using uh, software, typical software examples is less than and we can keep reading to across nearly to the uh, right hand side 1.0.0 dash RC, that means release candidate, dot one. Now that may or may not be something that could be used with archetypes. If we go into the next line you'll eventually see a second from the left, 1.0.0. So what this means is that 1.0.0 dash alpha and 1.0.0 dash release candidate one are less than or earlier versions the 1.0.0 and you can understand from that more or less how the whole system works and of course the the numeric part works as you would expect
1.0.1 is less than 1.0.2 and so on. There are rules for when the major version, that's the top level, the minor version, that's the middle one, uh, should be changed as well and they're more or less the same as uh, what we will use for archetypes. So we can imagine, as I said before, that uh, pre-release variants would probably come from the life cycle state. This shows the AOM class for archetype and where the uh, information for these version versions are uh, maintained. Currently in the current draft it's shown as functions that extract uh, versions uh, major and minor and build version information from an overall version ID. That may change but the design logic will be as we've stated uh, according to the previous slides. Let's talk a little bit about translations. You can see that in uh, this model going back to the authored resource class that's inherited into Archetype that we have some information about each uh, translation. Now, translations as you imagine cause new revisions so they don't really uh, have any implication in terms of new versions of archetypes. For each translation we record the language, the author, potentially some accreditation and other details. So here's an example this is the blood pressure archetype. It's actually got a lot of translations. You can see in the bottom half of the screen the information about the Farsi translator and then the information about the German translator and then uh, about the Argentinian Spanish uh, translation. Everything I've shown is all has been very technical so far and it's definitely the under the hood view so just to make you realize that everything can be friendly from the user point of view here's uh, an APGAR score archetype as shown by uh, the CKM at OpenAir and you can see all of the documentary items that you'd expect to see going from the archetype ID uh, concept description, keywords, copyright purpose and so on. Another view of the same information is available in the mind map view. You can see that I've expanded some of the fields uh, or subfields of the description out on the left and it's quite a convenient way for a user to very quickly uh, get an overview of an archetype and quickly check on things. This shows you uh, a history of versions view. Just a the first few versions is a, a lot more on this particular archetype because APGAR score happens to have been very heavily reviewed. You can see branching versions, you can see trunk versions. There's quite a lot of information that's available for each given version. This is all part of supporting group reviews. You can see that there are multiple people implicated in these versions as well. We can see here uh, some documentary information that uh, covers or describes uh, the number of reviews and facts about uh, the review rounds and acceptance and which revisions uh, were or how many revisions were made during a particular round. We've also got some uh, data on the size of the reviewer community. This information here isn't metadata that's recorded inside the archetype itself. That's the tool doing that of course. So in summary we looked at the documentation for uh, original language, translations and the main description part which is multilingual apart from the authoring information. The documentation capability of the AOM and ADL is extensible via archetypable attributes, usually called other details. It's fairly common in the open air models. The versioning model and the semantics of versioning is uh, nearly complete and uh, will follow the SEMVER 
.org model of formal versioning. There's certainly potential for new fields to be added and also coding of existing fields to be done and uh, some of those may occur in the next major version of OpenAir and or ISO 13606 2012 revision. And lastly I mentioned that uh, features like formatting may also be considered for some fields. So that's it. That's the documentary capabilities of uh, archetypes and thank you very much for your attention. I hope to see you in the next installment of the training course.